Hey, family, we are back for another edition of The Shift. This is Catherine Trotter, a.k.a. CT Speaks, your host for this evening. How are we? This is the 1st of October. We are now officially in the fourth quarter of 2024. How was the first three quarters of the year? Listen, no matter what your answer might be, we have three months uh, to finish strong. I always say that to myself. I say that to any client that I work with. I say that to anyone that I am connected to. No matter what has happened in the first three months, we collectively can finish strong. Well, tonight we are going to be talking about the process of elimination. And I thought this was a really good topic to speak on to kick off the fourth quarter because sometimes as we are transitioning into a new quarter, a new season, we need to eliminate certain things that is causing our productivity to slow down. Sometimes we need to eliminate things, right? So you know how I do. I like to break down the words. When we look at the word process, what does process mean? It's a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. A process is a series of uh, progression, right? And sometimes it can be interdependent steps by which an end is attained. Um, another definition of process was a chemical process, right? You know, if you're mixing something together, there's going to be some kind of end result of something. It also went on to say process means it is a procedure, usually implies a formal or a set order of doing a particular thing. The definition went on to say it is a method of conducting affairs, uh, such as a parliamentary procedure, right? When I looked up the word of, it means expressing the relationship between a part and a whole. It went on to say used to show possession or a belonging to or the state of origin of something. Again, tonight we're talking about the process of elimination. Again, process is a series of actions or steps taken in order to, to hit a, a particular desired end of something. The word of means to show possession or belonging to, or it oftentimes means the origin of something. When we look at the word elimination, it means the complete removal or destruction of something. Elimination comes from the Latin word, limen, which means threshold. The Romans added an E to the beginning and created the verb, which means to banish or to push over the threshold out of the door. What are some things that we just need to banish? Some things we need to push over that threshold until it's out of the door of our circle, out of the door of our life, out of the door of our business, out of the door of our mindset, right? It, again, elimination means the complete removal or destruction of something. Sometimes we linger, sometimes we hang on to things and it just needs to be a complete removal. You fill in the blank of whatever that may need to be in your life, in your business. Sometimes we're hanging on to old business practices and it's not yielding any fruit. We need to remove the dead weight from our business models. We need to completely eradicate it. The analogy that I thought about when we're talking about the topic, the process of elimination, I immediately started to think about school. And you know how when we were in school, there was many tests that we were given through us, you know, through elementary, middle school and high school, right? We were often given a test. And we, as you know, on some of the exams, it was a multiple choice question, right? Now with those multiple choice questions, you would begin to reflect on the lesson previously taught to help with selecting the correct answer. You're pondering, you're reflecting, you're thinking about the things the teacher said, you're thinking about the homework assignments that you did to help cement that knowledge in your mind. You're thinking about the many quizzes that led up to this major exam day, right? All the, the in-between quizzes you had to take, all the homework assignments, all the classroom assignments, you're now in reflection mode. While this exam is right in front of you, while you're looking at these multiple choice questions, trying to determine which is the answer, typically multiple choice, it will be, you know, a possible four uh, different options you can select. Sometimes it will be 
a, a fifth of all of the above. And that's when you're like, okay, is it all of the above? Is it one? Which one is it? I don't know. That's when reflection kicks in. Do we do the same thing when it comes to our business model practice? Do we look and examine everything and go through a process of elim elimination? What is your process of elimination for growth and development with personal development? Because I truly believe this fourth quarter, it weighs heavy on how much we put bearings on our personal development. We cannot say, you know, we can say we're not where we need to be because of someone else. We can say that all day, but that's not going to help us move any farther forward. It's just not. So when we talk about process of elimination, I'm also talking about personal development, right? There are certain things in our mindset, our thought process, the way we handle things, the way we communicate, the way we conduct ourselves, right? A lot of times we need to work on the internal, right? And when we're working on the internal, that means some things need to be released. Some things need to be eliminated with that is not producing fruit in our lives. And sometimes it has nothing to do with anyone else. It's our mindset that we need to eliminate old thinking. We need to eliminate old ways of thinking, old patterns, things that's lodged in the mindset decade after decade. And it just, it just hasn't matured. Our mindsets haven't matured. So we got to get to the place where we're saying, you know what? I'm ready to take this exam. I've been through so many quizzes. My life has been quiz after quiz. Every time I turn around, I'm, I'm produced. I'm introduced to a new quiz in my life right? I'm introduced to a new problem in my business that I have to solve. So I've gone through so many quizzes, which has prepared me for this exam that I'm about to take, the, the fourth quarter exam, if you will. We all have to take it because we all want to cross into January 2025. The prerequisite is taking this fourth quarter exam. And the, the first three quarters of the year, we had our homework assignments, right? We had our in-class assignments, we had our quizzes. Look at each quarter of the year. Look at all the assignments you had to complete. Look at all the assignments that you had to fulfill, all the research, all the, the legwork that you had to do to bring you to the fourth quarter exam of your own life. Not anyone else, but your own life, right? And it's time for self-reflection. And as we self-reflect, when we look internal, we then identify what are some things we need to eliminate. What are some things that's not healthy? What are some things that's not conducive for forward growth and development, right? So let's go back to the example of the, 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 the test we're taking at school. It's an exam. As you look at the questions, you see that there's multiple answers that almost look like the right answer. It almost looks like it's the right one. But then it comes down to the two most possible correct answers that you could select. And then... Sometimes your heart starts racing just a little bit because of the two, you have to only select one final answer. And you know the clock is ticking because there's a certain time that you have to finish this entire exam. So you cannot waste your whole time on this one question. You got to answer it and move on. And that's how life is. Sometimes we get stuck on a particular question or a particular season in our life. And it's eating away our time. It's eating away our time when we should be moving on to the next and then to the next and to the, to the next season of our life. Just as with the quiz or just with, with the, this major exam, because the exam is a compilation of all the little quizzes you took all the first three quarters of this year. It's a compilation, right? And so, but sometimes we tarry on one question because we are so stumped and we're like, is, am I making the right decision? And we're overanalyzing. And I, again, I'm a strategist. So I believe in analyzing. I believe in, you know, thinking through situations, but sometimes we can think so long to the point we are paralyzed and we don't select an answer. I'm asking you to say yes to you today. I'm asking you to select an answer. Whatever that multiple choice question is going on in your mind right now, within your, your life, your personal life, your business life, your community project, Whatever those multiple choice questions are and you're trying to figure out which of the two, I've already eliminated two of the four possible. Now I'm down to the last two. And now I must pick the final one. Sometimes we think too long on making a choice. The first gut answer is typically the right answer. That's one thing I've known for myself when I had to take traditional exams 
when I'm thinking too long, I'm going to pick the wrong thing. Allow yourself to reflect on the knowledge you have received and then pick the right answer and just pick the answer. The method, when we think about the method, when we talk about the process of elimination, it typically is a logical method for narrowing down a list of options by removing unlikely ones until only one is left. It is a, a useful tool for problem solving and can be applied in many situations. The act of considering and rejecting each possible choice until only one is, one is left that is a struggle sometimes because we're battling within ourselves, and we want to make the right answer. But then there was a, a statement that I saw when I was researching the process of elimination and it says she figured out who she was by eliminating the areas of her life that did not align with her purpose. And you can fill in the blank with his purpose, with your purpose, with your mission statement of your organization. When in doubt, is it in alignment with your purpose? Is it in alignment with who you are? When we talk about the educational system and, and traditional tests, right? The process of eliminating involves eliminating options that are unlikely to be correct. And sometimes we get stuck in our personal life because we're like, you know, should I go left? Should I go right? And we're pondering and we're pondering, which we should reflect, but at some point we got to make a decision. And again, one of the things when we're talking about the process of elimination, when you're in that indecisive state of being and you're trying to figure it out, the process of elimination involves eliminating options that are unlikely to be correct. Disconnect from those areas or those multiple choice answers that has absolutely nothing to do with your purpose and absolutely nothing to do with your future. It has, it's not in an alignment at all. So take it off the table. Put a line through it. You know, sometimes when you're taking a traditional test and if it was a paper, we know everything's digitized now, but back in the day when we had those paper tests, we would put a line through the ones that we knew was not correct. So we could mentally wipe it out of our mind. Mentally, that was a form of elimination when we put a line through the incorrect ones that we know is just so far-fetched and it's not correct. I'm going to just put a line through it. Maybe you need to put a line through it. Well, whatever that area is in your life, put a line through it. Mentally, put a line through it that it is not connected to your future or your destiny. So therefore, you don't need to even allow any mental capacity to go in that area. You don't need to waste any more mental capacity. There's a quote that says, and this is a quote by Pablo Picasso. It says, art is the elimination of the unnecessary. I'm gonna say it again. Art is the elimination of the unnecessary. Think about an artist, an artist, and we know artists that's subjective to our personal taste of art, but think about our art is different, is diverse, right? And when I look at this quote, it says, art is the elimination of the unnecessary. What I get from that quote is, as an artist is probably creating this great masterpiece, they only want to create the images on that canvas that is going to create the image that they see in their mind. They're not going to add a certain color. That's not what they envision it to be. If somebody envisions to, to paint an ocean, if you will, we know ocean is blue, what have you. They're not going to probably put, uh, I don't know, yellow, if you will, right? Um, or some color that it has nothing to do with what they envision that ocean to look like. Maybe someone envisions the ocean to be green. I don't know. We know different places. I, I saw somewhere online and I saw that there was some tropical place and it was uh, pink. It was an ocean and it looked like it was pink sand. It was really beautiful. I hope to see it one day in person. But my bottom line is the art piece that an uh, artist is creating they're only going to use the colors that's going to depict what they see in their mind. The colors, any colors that has absolutely nothing to do with that ending visual picture that they want to paint is not going to hit the canvas. So in our own life, in our business, why are we picking up things that have nothing to do with our mission? Why are we including things in our daily life that has nothing to do with our mission? Why, why, why do we do that, right? And we add all these things. And listen, I'm talking about process of elimination because I had to go through this myself. So I'm not talking about something that I'm far removed from. I had to go through process of elimination. 
Um, and even not to stretch yourself so thin and so wide to the point you're so exhausted and you're no good for nothing, right? Process of elimination is also making sure that you're going to be able to operate in your optimum, to make sure you're going to operate out of your higher self, to make sure that you're giving the best of you. That's the significance of process of elimination is the making sure that you're operating at your best capacity. And so this whole fourth quarter, I want to encourage you to operate in your best capacity. And the only way we can operate in our best capacity is if we look at areas of our life that we need to add a little more personal development, focus on personal development to eliminate the waste. Just like we were detoxing in our body and we're cleansing our body, we would we need to detox the waste. We need to detox the waste in our mindset. Sometimes there's too much waste in the mindset. There's too much noise going on. And you got to be mindful in this fourth quarter who is talking in your ear. Who is speaking to you? Are they speaking life or are they speaking death? Are you speaking life to yourself or are you speaking death? What are you allowing to take in into your being? What are you watching? What are you listening to? What environments are you going into? Because we can talk about process of elimination all day long, but if we're going to continue to put ourselves in certain environments that is it's full of waste, we're going to always be full of waste ourselves, right? So we have to make sure that we're so mindful of the surroundings of what's around us, who's around us, who we are putting ourselves around, what we're taking in, what we're listening to, right? It all goes hand in hand. It all goes hand in hand. So we have to be very mindful of how we're moving, how we're building. Um, because at the end of the day, uh, if we're not conscious of how we're building, if we're not conscious of how we're moving, it is going to stagnate our growth. And get this, this is the other thing. Our life is not, uh, we're not just an island into ourselves. Our life is connected to someone else. And I know everyone that listens to this show, you're a leader in some capacity. So you're leading someone, right? If we're going to be at our best as a leader, we have to keep growing. That means we often have to eliminate the waste. Um, this past Saturday, we had Speak Life to the Nations and our first presenter. And he said at every quarter, at the end of every quarter, he goes away for like a couple of days and he assesses that quarter. He don't let a whole year go by. He does it every single quarter at the end and assess how that quarter went, what went well, what did not go well, and what he needs to correct for the upcoming quarter. You know, and sometimes we're so stuffed because we have so much um, stuff we haven't eliminated yet. We haven't released yet. And we let a whole year go by and we are full. We are full. Right? We're full. We need to eliminate the waste. Think about if you eat late, right? And you proceed to get sleepy and you lay down on all that heavy food. Sometimes I know I, I don't rest well if, if I have a heavy food on my stomach and I'm trying to lay down and go to sleep. I, it's not going to be a, a restful evening. And then I started to think about, you know, sometimes people that, you know, may have be dissatisfied with their life. Let's put it that way. Um, a lot of times it's because they haven't eliminated the waste. And a lot of times it's because they haven't stepped out into their purpose. So they feel so full. They haven't been able to execute on their purpose for their life. They're so full. And so I'm speaking to someone right now. You don't want to die full. You don't even want to walk through this life feeling full. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. Think about it. We, we all go to these. Uh, we all have been to all you can eat place. And the food is just everywhere. It's appealing. So people want to stack the plates. I know when we was growing up, little kids, uh, me and my brother had a competition. Who could put away the most plates? Who could eat the most? And you all know you're feeling uncomfortable after you eat all that food. F food, you're too full. You're too full. And sometimes we stuff ourselves with too much at one time. And we're not doing a constant elimination of the waste. So I hope something that was said will encourage you, will inspire you, will uplift you to become your best self. In order to become your best self, you must eliminate the waste, whatever that might be for you, whatever that may look like for you, right? Um, I encourage you to continue to put one foot in front of the other and keep 
moving forward. Anyone that needs assistance around business development, strategic planning, organizational development, I'm taking my last client for the year on November the 5th. And then we're going to be picking back up January 7th of next year with a brand new system, a brand new team. I'm super excited about it. We'll be revealing all that information at the top of next year. But if you need help, get with me um, by November the 5th. Call me 443-799-6529 or send me an email, ct at katherinetrotter.com. And again, tonight's conversation was about the process of elimination. Again, process means a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. The word of means used to show possession, belonging, or a state of origin. Elimination is the complete removal of or destruction of something that is impeding forward progress. Again, the quote that I read from Pablo Picasso, art is the elimination of the unnecessary. And with that being said, I'm going to see everybody at the top.